Hi, this is Brian King, founder of SpectreMentor.com. A client asked me a very important question today. She said, how did you get to be so good at this being an Aspie? What she was referring to is, how did I achieve this level of mastery over understanding communication, understanding how relationships work at their deepest level? That was a darn good question because when it comes to people on the autism spectrum, I've kind of blown the stereotypes out of the water, and it wasn't easy. I'm like any other Aspie. I grew up sitting on the edge of the playground. Uh, I was more entertained by watching the ants march in a straight line than I was at playing kickball or shooting hoops or anything else the other kids were doing. I found it confusing. It was too fast. When I would try and get involved... I'd end up, because of my motor planning issues, my clumsiness, I ended up dropping the ball. I couldn't catch it, and kids were calling me names. Uh, I was picked last, you know, like a lot of us. And the bullying, you know, don't get me started on that. I mean, every day, the question wasn't whether, if I was going to be bullied, it was by who, how long, what form it was going to come in, were they going to call me names or were they going to punch me in the stomach, Were they going to insult my mother? Were they going to question my masculinity? I mean, the list goes on and on. It it was god-awful, to say the least. And the bullying lasted until I was a a sophomore in high school, when I guess at that point, they just got bored with me. But the point is, through my entire life, relationships have been the primary struggle that I've had. I try to give a compliment. Someone would say I was being rude. I'd be asked for my opinion. I'd give it. And again being told that I was being rude. It didn't seem that I could win no matter how hard I tried. At any given time, I had one friend. And there were a couple years where I had no friends. And I pretty much just spent that time reading, taking walks, getting lost in my imagination, finding some way to add value to my life when nobody was in it. So here I am, age 41, providing services to people, touring the country, teaching teachers, parents, how to be master communicators with their children. How the heck did I go from the life I just described to the one I have now? Well, it all came down to becoming a father. Well, if I'm a lousy communicator, how do I even get married? Well, as it turns out, uh, the woman that I was married to, the mother of my three boys, we were both kind of, you know, wallflowers. We were both nerdy, didn't have too many friends, were kind of quiet. We found each other, and long story short, we were two lonely souls who got together and got married for all the wrong reasons. I know there are a lot of people out there that can relate to that. But although the marriage didn't last, what we do have in common are three beautiful boys who are also spectrumites. And... I was allowed to continue to be socially awkward because I was married to somebody who was socially awkward. And there were no really real pressures to reach outside and meet new people and socially mingle because I had someone now. So there was no incentive there. So enter my firstborn son, who upon entering first grade imploded. He began having meltdowns. He was turning over chairs. He was threatening teachers. He was doing stuff that we never saw him do before in the very isolated social life that we had provided for him. He didn't have too many interactions with the neighborhood kids. He interacted with his cousins, and he became very comfortable with them, and so there were no new social challenges that required him to step outside his comfort zone. So we thought everything was just fine with him. Then he entered the public school system, and that's where all those problems that I just described began. And they got worse and worse, to the point where... The teachers couldn't handle him anymore. They actually kept this stuff from us for a good month, month and a half. Then the teacher called one day and explained to me everything that had been happening with him and suggested that he might be somewhere on the autism spectrum. Well, a few assessments later, we determined that he was, in fact, on the autism spectrum. And even more assessments later revealed that he got it from dear old dad. And where we expected that the school that embraced this term to describe the challenges he was having would also embrace the idea of helping him to create a better fit between him and the school environment. Not so. 
their solution was that everything be addressed as a behavior issue. He'd been, he'd be given medication and basically encouraged to submit to the will of everybody around him and just be a good little boy. Well, that didn't work. His needs were the last thing on their mind. Uh, and I want to say for the record, the schools that my sons are in now have been a godsend. They are unique among schools in terms of their proactivity and their desire to engage the parents and the children and really make it a win-win situation. But the school he started out with was the exact opposite of that. So back to how I became this master communicator, master of relationships. It was because of my son's first grade experience. They seemed to go out of their way to do nothing for him. And when there was such a lack of help, such a lack of initiative, I could only see one future for my child if he continued along those lines. He would be miserable. He would be lonely. He would be ostracized. And when I envisioned that future, it terrified me. It infuriated me. And I made a decision that under no circumstances would I allow that to happen. And since no one else seemed to be stepping up, well, there was only one person left, me. So even with my own communication and relationship challenges, I knew that if he was going to have all of the tools that he needed to be happy, to be accepted, to be fulfilled, to make his contribution in life, I would have to bend over backwards to not only know what the skills were, but to master them myself so that I could teach them to him and now his brothers. And fortunately, I became so darn good at it because of my own commitment level that people now look to me to teach them how to do the same thing. And the skills that I've learned, and a lot of them I've developed, are in order to bridge that gap between those of us who live in a very concrete world where nonverbal communication might as well not exist, and how do we then reach out and connect with people who live in a very nonverbal world? A lot of suggestions, a lot of hints, a lot of read between the lines, a lot of assumption. If we are not good at that kind of stuff as spectrumites, how on earth do we connect with those whose primary means of communicating is that way? And guess what? I've come up with the tools by necessity. A lot of the tools that other people don't teach because they didn't commit themselves to finding those tools. They committed themselves to finding tools that require people on the spectrum to learn to mind read, which nobody can, by the way, to learn to read between the lines, which few people can do effectively. And I wasn't satisfied with good enough. I wanted to be outstanding at this because I've had too much pain in my life from not being good enough at it, from being kind of okay, from being pretty good, and I still had a lot of the misunderstandings that lead to a lot of hurt feelings, a lot of resentment, a lot of things that in some cases can end relationships simply because the people in that relationship did not know how to communicate with each other. I have committed my life for the past 13 years now to finding every possible strategy to virtually eliminate misunderstandings from relationships, from communication, to keep people on the same page as much as possible, to keep us connected, to keep us on the same page, because that's where our greatest strength in our relationships are, how effectively we connect and work together. I found some marvelous strategies that even you know, Temple Grandin herself, who gave an endorsement to my upcoming book, said, this is the kind of stuff that people need to be learning. This is the kind of stuff we need to be teaching our kids. So I do what I do because my kids are not the only ones that are suffering. My kids are not the only ones that need the tools to succeed in a world that isn't always interested in stepping up on their behalf and helping them out. So instead of shaking our finger and blaming the rest of the world, saying, you need to do more for our kids, in the meantime, we need to do a heck of a lot more for ourselves as parents. We cannot continue to wait for the rest of the world to step up and teach our kids what they need to know. We as parents must step up and become master communicators so we can teach those very skills to our kids. And the first conversation we need to change 
is the one between our own two ears. The one that tells us we can't do it as parents. We're too tired. We already do enough already. We've tried everything. That conversation you have with yourself can make or break you as a parent and will definitely make or break you as a role model to your child. So if you want to learn how to become a master communicator, clearly I'm the one who can teach you how to do that. But the first communication you need to master is the one you have with yourself. So I'm here for you because life and my kids have required me to be here for them. And that is something I am going to be committed to doing until my last breath. So if there's ever anything I can do to help you, you know how to find me, SpectreMentor.com. Just reach out, let's have a chat, and let's start the conversation. It's great talking to you. Take care.